Now the second type of progression which we are going to discuss for the session is geometric progression. As we have already discussed, there are, there are two types of progressions which we are just going to discuss in the syllabus. Now the arithmetic progression was already discussed, the second progression being geometric progression for the discussion of the day. Now what is a geometric sequence? As arithmetic progression has its own definition, a geometric progression also has its respective definition. So let's recap with arithmetic progression. An arithmetic progression has the common difference same. So in geometric progression, what is same? Is the common difference same? Or what is the additional property which makes the special case of geometric progression with its own respective definition is what we are going to discuss for the day. Now before we start with the properties or the formulae or the definition of geometric progression, let me come to a real life situation where we understand geometric progression through a real life example. For example, I just come with a real life example where Scientists have calculated the number of scientists researching the cells of body. Usually the scientists in the laboratories, in the chemical or the biological laboratories research on different cells and the tendencies or the behavior of the cells of the different creatures including human so that is the case which i want to take as my real life example connecting with geometric progression so scientists researching the cells of body identified the growth of cells usually the cells grow in their own means in different proportions so when they were researching on one of the living creature of the cells which grow in number, they wanted to calculate on how many cells are growing. So identified the growth of cells as follows. So they were just doing the research on everyday basis. On day one, they identified the number of cells was of one particular specimen on which they were researching was 14. On what particular specimen through which they were identifying the research had number of cells which were 14 on day one. Then what happened was on everyday basis they were trying to just research on how many cells were growing on the day two. So on day two they have identified the number of cells were 28. Then immediately they identified on day 3 the number of cells was 56. Then day 4 the number of cells were 112 etc. So this was the conclusion which they could make on the number of cells which were increasing then without calculating on how many cells were there for the next day they wanted to assume on in future how many cells would grow on day seven so this was something through which they wanted to use mathematics in calculating the scientists or the doctors were trying to use mathematics here so on day one the number of cells were 14 on day two the number of cells were 28 day three four etc and I wanted to know how many cells were growing on the seventh day using the first four basic information. So this has to be identified with a pattern if I really wanted to find the number of cells which are growing on day seven for the particular specimen. So how do we do that? What kind of a pattern is identified? So let's see what kind of a pattern we are going to identify in this case of an example problem. So let's take the numbers in a sequence where I have 14, 
next 28 56 112 is what I have and this is for day one this is for day two day three day four similarly how do I know my number of cells in day five is the biggest question here the pattern which we are going to identify here is that I clearly identify when I multiply the number 14 with 2 I get 28 and 28 times 2 is 56 56 times 2 is 112 112 times 2 is 224 and day 6 224 times 2 is 448 and finally on day 7 I multiply this so that I get 896 is what I get on the day 7. That means when the scientists wanted to estimate on the number of cells which are growing on the day 7 in the continuous growth of cells they could identify that there are 896 cells which would exist on the 7th day. This is purely because of the pattern identified here where each of them is the first day, day 1 is 14 and day 2 is 2 times of 14 which is 28. Similarly, when I go proceeding similarly, day 7 is 2 times of day 6 which is nothing but twice of 448 which gives me 896 cells which grow on day 7. So this is how we identify the number of cells on the 7th day using a pattern and this kind of a pattern is called geometric progression. A real life example connecting geometric sequence with the problem. So let's see in brief how geometric progression can be used or study it in general form and with its varied properties. So now that we have identified that in every case there's a common multiple which is multiplied because when I take 14, 28, 56, 112 etc. I see that each of them is obtained by multiplying 2. That is I get 14, 2 times of 14 which is 28 and my third term is 2 times of 28 which is 56 and next it is 2 times of 56 which is 112 and 2 times of 112 etc. So in this case I identify that there is a common multiple in each of the patterns. This common multiple makes us understand that this is very much associated with geometric progression. A common difference is associated with arithmetic uh, progression and a common multiple is associated with the geometric progression. So let's see in brief about what exactly is a geometric progression to support with this real life example. Now let's see geometric progression in its general form as we have studied with a pre previous real life example. So a geometric progression in its general form And similar to arithmetic progression in its general form is defined as a a r a r square a r cube a r power n minus 1 and so on and so forth so in this case usually we denote the geometric sequence or the geometric progression with a a r a r square a r cube etc where a is said to be the first term and r is said to be the common ratio just like d is the common dif difference the difference of each of the pairs is same here the ratio of each of the pairs is same is the only difference between ap and gp if the common difference is same and ap if the common ratio is same it's a gp so what is the common ratio a common ratio is the ratio of this divided by this which is a r by a which is r Similarly, when I divide this term with this, I get R and when I divide this term with this, I get R and so on and so forth. So if my division gives me an equal quantity, then I say the common ratio is same 
and hence such a sequence is called a geometric progression and this is the general form of representing the geometrical progression in this the first term is denoted with a1 and it is called a similarly the second term is denoted with a2 and is nothing but ar the third term is ar square so the third term denoted by a3 is ar squared so whenever i just take the second term it is one shot off with the power r so third term is 2 99th term is ar power 98 because one shot of 99 is 98 therefore concluding this i get nth term of geometric sequence denoted by a n is obviously a r power n minus 1 one shot of n is how I identify the nth term of GP as identified here so this is how I get the formula for the nth term of geometric progression being a r power n minus 1 where a is the first term r is the common ratio and n is the number of terms so nth term given by this formula has a is first term r is common ratio and n is the position or number of terms is how I get each one of them connected in the formula. So this is the formula for geometric sequence to, set, to discuss with more example problems.